Hey, Steph, how are you? I'm good, Nina. How are you? I am great. I'm excited for the weekend. Yes, this weather. I know. It's been so beautiful out. I was worried that it'd be really rainy after last week, but it's been so nice. I know. It, I know we talk about weather a lot, but it's very emotional and moody weather in Florida, so I feel like we got to talk about it when it's good. Right. And also, I mean, especially in Florida, it it directly affects your life it's sometimes it's so hot and just are so muggy you're just i mean you can't just live your life if taylor swift if anyone saw the the clips from that concert you saw her hair started out like sleek and straight and then just turned into like a curly mess yeah that's how we have to live with that every day you gotta live your life around the weather oh it's it's critical here so absolutely well i'm excited nina about our topic today yeah, yeah i'm excited too we are going to be speaking about AI, uh, more specifically chat GPT, because that's the most common one we're hearing. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have probably heard of chat, B- chat GPT, even if you haven't used it yourself before. It's everywhere. It is. In the news. Yes, it's, it's come on strong and fast. Before we dive in, we'll kind of tell you what what is AI or chat GPT. So chat GPT is considered a large language model. So it produces large amounts of text for you in response to a prompt that you give it. It is done by artificial intelligence. And like we said, it's taken the internet and businesses by storm. Right. And But it's I feel like it's exciting. It's like not scary. Like what's that movie with uh, Will Smith? I robot isn't that aren't they i've seen five movies my whole life that's right i forget i don't know why i'm asking you this i think it's i robot i I don't like that movie because we all know what happens towards the end or maybe you do but so i I watched it the one time and i was like this one's not for me but it's a, a really exciting tool and i feel like people are not as you know, people are, are excited about it because what were the stats that you had looked up or you had heard? So about? Chat GPT gained a million users in five days. Let me put that into relative terms for you. It took Netflix 3.5 years to get a million users um, and it took Facebook 10 months to achieve 1 million users. So Dang. this, when it, we say it's an overnight success for the creators of it, it has truly been an overnight success. Right. And like it's only been you, around since November and I feel like it's in the news every single day. Right. And like Netflix I feel like was pretty much the first of its kind when it converted to that online format for streaming. So like it takes I mean, you know, it makes sense that it would take a little while. But like Facebook wasn't the first social right. networking MySpace, site. Baby. MySpace, yeah, MySpace baby. Well, top A. There were the chat rooms and stuff. So like even with it like looking at something that's brand new and then looking at something that's already been around for a while chat gpt is brand new it's a there's nothing else like it and instantly people you know no one was like wow they jumped on hard and like just scrapped real quick well and it's powerful it's so nina and i were talking about this yesterday i was sharing this with her actually they had chat gpt they just came out with a 4.0 it's their latest model. I think it came out like March 16th or something. Don't don't hold me to that date. Before that, there was Chat GPT 3.5. The 3.5 version took the bar exam, and I want to say it was in Arizona, and it got a 10 percent. It only knew 10 percent of the answers. They just had Chat GPT 4.0 take the bar exam, and it passed with a 90 percent. It uh, knew 90 percent of the information so Dang. incredible advancement in a short amount of time because it's only been out since november and they've already made increases to what it's capable of doing and it's just incredible and i think i'm in a bunch of marketing groups online and so there's two groups of people or maybe three there's the first group that's terrified that uh, AI and chat GPT and things like that will take jobs. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Nor- I feel like that's a normal fear. Yeah, absolutely. Marketing jobs, data entry jobs, anything like that, uh, telemarketer jobs, which we already deal with AI in the telemarketer sense. A lot of people that call you are bots or like when you call and it's asking you what you want to find in that phone call like what menu that's a lot of times ai oh, right yeah. there or um when you go to the websites and it has a picture of somebody and then like can we help you i don't think that's a real person right it's that's not. AI. yeah that's AI. AI. so we've been using ai for quite some time we just aren't haven't been aware of it should, or into the power it's, uh, funny fun fun fact um i didn't realize that at first so when these people would message me i would felt like i was being impolite if i ignored them so i would reply <laughs> no thanks for that first for that when that was the first like a thing i don't do it anymore obviously i figured it out but in the first few months that would pop up on web web pages like 
um no thank you have a good day <laughs> yeah it's it's so funny how no, I'm like so embarrassed by that <laughs> no no I would think the same thing I mean at first you're like I mean I, we, we try never to be rude so right, I would I would be polite then you know yeah I would make the same decision <laughs> Well, with our podcast dealing with real estate marketing, we kind of wanted to talk into that today, but this episode could be powerful for any industry you're in, I believe. Right, because I don't think, I think a lot of people just think of it as some, you know, thing that these college students are using to write their essays for them, which don't recommend that. We're not saying you should. Um, but yeah, like because now they've already, as quickly as AI came out with, mm -hmm. they came out with a program that can detect yeah, AI. Can so detect it, that so. was equally, that matched right up with the rollout of AI right after that came out the detection of AI right. and even Google there is some there's always going back and forth in the marketing groups can Google detect whenever you put out like an AI written blog post and are they going to prioritize those AI written blog posts yeah. that's for another topic I have some strong opinions on that so we won't dive into that because then I'll go okay. on a tangent <laughs> so We'll talk about how you could use it in real estate. I think most people think, oh, I'll use it to write my Instagram captions and or my property descriptions. I think it's oh, the yeah. most common one is like, oh, well, I'll just give it a few facts about this house and then it'll write me a property description, which is absolutely true, but it's so much more powerful than that. So we don't want to give you like the basics. We kind of wanted to go one, maybe one level deeper on how you can really use it. Yeah, so um, I feel like one of the coolest things that you can use it for is the keyword research because you can just ask it what are the like major keywords that are searched in your in industry, real, yeah, yeah. In my industry and in real estate, and it'll spit back those things that you need. So then you can include those keywords in your posts and, and in your, your titles. And stuff. So that way, when it'll come, it'll increase your SEO. And if you have a website, which we always encourage, you know how important we feel about that. And also getting those Google rankings. This, it's very expensive to pay for a lot of the keyword research programs out there. Some of them can run up to $99 a month. And this will definitely help you do a lot of the keyword research yourself and be able to save or maybe pay for a lesser plan. The next one I'm going to mention, but maybe let Nina speak into it because this is her level of expertise, which is coding and that is crazy that this thing can code not only for websites but can code for excel sheets right yeah and um i haven't played around with it too too much as with the excel spreadsheets but the like the idea i would definitely want to try and see like how that could be used because a lot of times with excel like you'll spend forever trying to like finagle it or um like troubleshoot the issues of like oh where did it go wrong but if you can just ask it for that template for you then you can Plug and play. Right, exactly. So yeah. there's no, like, because I've had this issue even when I was still in like elementary math. I'm really bad about like doing something super fast and missing the details. So if you already have that template laid out for you, then you can just go and plug in what you need and you have less chance right. of mistakes. Yeah, it'll it tell you exactly so time. which cell to put what. And then it will, sp so if you go in, it like literally walks you step by step on how to set up an Excel spreadsheet. And it'll say like, and sell this number, put this code and sell number this, and then it'll compute whatever. So like if you're gonna do maybe your spending or your mileage or whatever, you're gonna yeah. track in your real estate and you, Nina creates those and she, it's part of one of the things we teach within our company and in our classes. And she's like, I'm going to add that to teach other people how to just get the codes from ChatGPT. I'm not going to run from it and think ChatGPT is going to take my job. I'm going to speak life into that and show people the power yeah, of it. I don't think it's going anywhere, especially when, when you got a million users in five days and that number right. just keeps increasing. So, And we didn't really speak too much in that earlier, but we are going to utilize it. We're going to teach it. We're going to have it. And we'll speak into that a little more in a while, but we're not afraid of its power that it's going to take our job we're yeah. excited about what it will bring to most industries right because I, I don't think that i mean i know that i robot movie scared people but i don't think that it's going to be i think it can be a great tool but i don't think it's going to eliminate human jobs you right know? Like, i feel like there's always going to need that there's always going to have to be that brain that looks over it and makes sure that it's Absolutely. So the next thing that you could use it for is website content, which kind of goes without saying. You can ask it to write paragraphs for your website. We don't really have to spend too much time on that one. I'll let you do the next one. Um, you can use it to write your bi biography because I don't know about you guys, but it be, it's kind of awkward to like write about yourself or even write about somebody else that you know really well. Like it can just kind of be 
hard to come up with the words. So instead of like spending an hour being like, cause I'll be a perfectionist about stuff too, a perfect perfectionist about it and go back and edit it a million times. So it's nice to just like put in your details or whoever's details and it can just write you out this biography. And I pretty much always will still want to go back in and like make sure that everything that it's saying is correct and the way that I want it to be communicated. But it's so nice to just have like a framework already made out for you because yeah. you just plug in what you need. For sure. That's a that's a really good one, powerful one, and a big time saver. And we're going to talk a little more about that later, the benefits of it. The next one is email marketing. Again, self-explanatory. It can produce some wonderful emails in your niche, a big time saver, but we're going to talk about that part later. And the final one is marketing campaigns. So you can go in and ask ChatGPT to create you a five-day, a 10-day marketing campaign around a certain topic or subject, and it will spit out each topic and some of the copy you would need for each topic for the next five to 10 days. Therefore, it's cohesive. Right. Like if you, um, if you're big on Twitter, if you use your Twitter a lot, you can just have it write tweets for you, you know, and they can make them be cohesive and almost like, um, like a teacher's lesson plan, like have it be to where they all interrelate. You can ask for that and it'll just type it out for you. Right. It, It makes it feel a lot more like a strategy. We preach that a lot. I can tell when someone just randomly throws something on their Instagram or Facebook, most people can't, but we look at it from a marketing lens and I can tell when someone posts strategically And there have been seasons in my life where I have done both, where I'm like, you know, Instagram is not a priority, so we're just going to post it this way. And then there's times where it is so laid out in our lives and every post builds on the last post. So ChatGPT gives you the option to build on the last post cohesively and and really great information. Right, because even if your audience doesn't recognize that you have this like layout in place, I feel like they'll still receive the information a little bit better because it's more digestible. You know exactly. So if you build on something and you have the basic information on the those first few days, and then you you know if that day five stuff maybe is a little bit more of a convoluted topic, they'll already understand it. Even if they if and they'd understand it better than if they would have gotten it on day one. But because you have it planned out like that, it's just more digestible. Yep, absolutely. Next thing is, how do you use ChatGPT? So this is really the meat and potatoes of our episode. It's a quick part, but it's you have to know how to prompt ChatGPT or it is a waste and you will become frustrated. I actually see people in my marketing groups that cancel their subscription to ChatGPT 4.0. Right. And I, uh, I wish they made like a Duolingo app for this. So, so you could learn how to talk in like the chat GPT language. Cause I think I've talked about this before. Um, my, uh, my dad, so he works in tech and he, I've like, he'll fix stuff on the computer. Or he'll just tell me like stories from work. And I asked him like, how do you know how to fix all this stuff? Like, obviously everyone thinks her dad is like a superhero. And I'm like, how do you do this? And he, uh, he says, it's not that I know how to fix every problem, I just know how to use the internet to look for the answers for every problem. So he says that it's not that he's super skilled in fixing computers. He's just super skilled in Googling how to fix computers. His search, his search, making things searchable and knowing how to do that. He's able to like ask for it in the language that is understood by the search engines to give him the results that he needs like he knows how to ask for the information in a way that he'll get it because he says all the time like there's nothing that like there's no computer issue that i'm going to be the first to discover Uh, we say that in marketing all the time there's nothing we're going to teach you in our marketing classes or on a podcast that you cannot find on the internet for free you're just going to have to know how to search to find those uh, you know those ideas and topics and i feel like it's the same way with chat gpt it's ask like when you put in those prompts it's ask it's figuring out the right format to get what you want and to get it relatively consistently to where you can keep using it in that tone. You're not getting all these like right. different sounding things. When it comes to being specific, you're going to want to act ask it to act as a role. So you need to say you are acting as a real estate agent or as a lawyer, as a marketer, as a small business owner. You need to give it a role. And be specific about the role. Yeah, very specific. Try not to go general. The next thing is you want to tell it what you're asking it to create. Or is it an Instagram post, an email newsletter, a blog post, or a headline? It really needs to know the task you are asking. Yeah, so you're you- essentially giving it like a format to write in, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, 
could ask it for a novel, I guess. But if you want a, a Twitter post, that's you know, two different, very different things. So mine would start out with saying, my name is Stephanie Davis. I'm a marketer, so that's my role. And I need you to create a blog post for me. And then the next thing we are going to do is give it a tone. I write in a sassy, friendly tone. So very direct, very girl, like, girl, don't be doing that. Heck no. Or yes, yes, you did that so well. I'm friendly, but I also have a slight sass in the fact that, like, I'll kind of tell you she direct. She up in Georgia. She's a little sassy. Yeah, a little sassy. She's got so, that southern sass. <laughs> yeah, so I'll tell you, like, heck no, or yes, yes, you know. But I do it in a friendly way. So my typical tone I ask for something is friendly, sassy, but you can ask for formal. Like if you're writing a brochure that you're going to pass out, it probably needs to be written formal. So the next thing is ask for your tone. After that, you're going to ask for the format if you don't feel like it understood the task. Sometimes I don't want my Instagram post to be a paragraph. I want them to be shorter. Yeah, but if I it. Yes, but if I want it longer, I will say, uh, you know, above we said create a task. So it will say, my name is Stephanie Davis. My role is a marketer. I need you to create me an Instagram post in a sassy, friendly tone in two paragraphs. So that part is your format. How do I want it written? Paragraphs. But you could put bullet points. You could put list. Any way you want it to come out, you just need to let it know. And then the other one, especially if you're doing biographies for other people, is give it the names of the people you are writing about and it will give you some, and some a few tips about those people. Not a it'll whole lot. It'll make it like more personal too. It'll incorporate the name and everything. Right. So if I was a marketer and I was going to write a blog post about Nina here, I would say write a blog post about Nina. She is very friendly. She does well at data analysis. She went to school at UNF. She loves her dog. So I would give it those facts, but in a very precise, don't get wordy, don't be adding six periods to the end of a smiley face emoji, just yeah, straight and then facts. you better get prepared for the best blog post of your life. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, yes. Now, let's say that it gives you back something and you're like, whoa, that was way too wordy. You can ask ChatGPT, you can respond back to it and say, thank you for that information. However, could you make it a little more concise for me? It will spit the same information back out to you in a much shorter version. And you can even ask it to use like more simple vocabulary or more elevated vocabulary. You can ask for that. You can prompt for that as well. So if you uh, if you think that maybe your target audience might not understand some of the like finer language they, they use, or if you just want it to be more casual, you can ask for it to use more casual language. Right. Whenever we do real estate marketing, we know that there are times we're going to be in very, very in front of very, very new agents and the language is going to be much different than seasoned agents who have been doing it for 25 years. Yeah. And we can or ask for that language like difference. Some, sometimes you just want to match their tone, you know? Some people are going to be more formal, you know? Yeah. Like when you write an email, you know, if we write an email to a broker that we've never worked with before versus Charnel who we've had in our podcast, we might have yeah. a different tone in that email. Correct. That's a, that's a really good point right there, Nina. So if you're in real estate and you are going to go with the property description or maybe you're going to put this property up on your website and write a little blog post about it, which I highly recommend, Drives SEO. What you would do is you would give um, the address, including the town and the road, obviously. And then I want you to give a few fun facts about the area and they can include that in your blog post that you're going to then put that property straight from the MLS up on a blog post, add what ChatGPT gives you and post that. And that's going to exponentially drive your SEO, especially what they call local SEO. I would do that on every single property I ever listed or sold on your website. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's such a great traffic driver. All right, those are, that is exactly how you use it to be specific. I will get something put up on our website today with that list. So in case you're driving and you're like, oh, I didn't have a chance to write all that down. Yeah, we can um, we'll create a blog post But on it. I'm just going to read them out really quickly. You're going to ask it to act as a role, create a task, give a tone, show, show you, tell it a format, and then give specific names of who it's going to be about. If it's too wordy, ask to give you a concise version. But like I said, I'll get it up on the website. So let's move into if we, how we kind of feel about this long term, the long game of ChatGPT, and where we think this will take us, and maybe some of our feelings about it. Yeah, 
And I don't know, I, it's still at the end of the day, a human made product and you have to watch out for some, for your results that they don't have. I think they're called, they call them hallucinations. They say Mm -hmm. that it can, um, it'll hallucinate and just make up stuff because it's trying to make up what it, they think, what it, it thinks or what it believes is the most likely or the most like, yeah, most likely. And so it'll just like come up with stuff. And sometimes that stuff's not true. So especially right. with like your biographies and stuff, like you're gonna, you have to proofread it. You have to like look over it. You can't just like let it go um, and like trust that everything that's on there works. It's almost like the same as having like an intern in the office and you ask him on a project. Like you're, even though they're probably capable of doing it and most of the time it is gonna be pretty good work, you're still, you can't just, not look it over or edit it you know and we can speak into that so how do we truly use chat gpt i want to offer a level of honesty with you here we gave you some ideas and so what does that look like on our end chat gpt is definitely something we use as a framework but we are passionate about our own voices and that is we have the, a lot to say if you haven't noticed yeah this. if you haven't noticed we have a <laughs> podcast youtube channel blog like we're trying to get all the words out into the world but really i preach that so much so there's millions of marketers there's millions of realtors there's millions of lawyers there's millions of whatever profession you want to say but what so people are like how am i going to make it when there's a million realtors or how am i going to make it in marketing because there's only one you and only one you can deliver the message the way that you can it's the same way you if you're a listener of this, you're more than likely a real estate agent and you probably follow several marketing people. There's one to two that you connect with or like the most. And if we all sat in a room, maybe 50 of us got together and we went around the room and we said our favorite marketing person to watch on Instagram or TikTok, we're all going to have a different answer because everyone speaks differently and you receive it differently. And that is why I don't think it can replace humans because we are one looking for human connection and we all say it so differently so let me get back to how we use it we use it as a framework but it's never our voice right i feel like if anything we'll use it to make like a template or like a rough draft like we just used it yesterday to write like kind of it wasn't like a difficult email but it wasn't like the happiest most fun of emails so we we typed into jet chat gpt what we wanted and what would have probably taken us an hour to write an email we were able to have it create a rough draft for us and then we went in and we did have i would say some relatively significant editing but the fact that we had that framework in there we were able to write that email in probably 10 or 15 minutes and that was with us like nitpicking and being like are we nice is that is that coming off nice is that you know like we were very hard on ourselves about the way we wrote the email but with having that outline already made for us we were able to get it done in 15 minutes and then move on to creating great content for this podcast for y'all yeah oh, no, yeah we but still you we know, did we write all on. our own podcast information for this we did not use chat gpt at all not even for a framework and i want to well, caution we you we could have but <laughs> i want to caution you about using chat gpt as your actual with no revisions because I, I can tell now that I've had ChatGPT and we've used it in our business, if I've followed someone for six months, so I've learned how they post, learned what they say, I can tell now if they're using ChatGPT or if it's their own voice. And people who have switched to just copying and pasting from ChatGPT, what it does is it takes away a level of authenticity And when you lose authenticity, you lose the ability to be the authoritative figure in your industry. So I'm going to caution heavily against, while we just told you how to use it, what it was great for, a direct copy and paste, I would not ever do. This is meant to help your business, or as Nina called it, it's an intern to your business. So it takes a little off your plate. It definitely takes off 10 to 15 hours of work for me a week. We were about to hire an assistant, honestly. But now I can get so much of my frameworks for Instagram posts, blog posts, and then I go back in and add him all my own voice. Right, and I feel like what helps, it helps a lot too from keeping me from getting like super overwhelmed. Like I might have a bunch of things on my to-do list and some of them are just as simple as like sending an email to someone. And sometimes that can be really nerve wracking or creating or creating an Instagram caption or something like just something that is just weighing, it's filling my mental load a lot. And so be able to have it just, you know, create it gets you to a starting point because most of the time once you just start you're good it's the same thing if you're writing a property description if you're a real estate agent listening that first line or two you're like it gets that momentum going yes and then you can carry it forward you know and i feel like even though i might i might take what chat gpt gives me and completely rewrite it but what i completely rewrote 
will probably take me less time than if I would have just completely organically started. Uh, started with a blank word document. I, right. Yeah, I fully agree with that. That's how I would say I use it. It just sometimes I'm tired. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a mom running a business and a wife and all these things and we're just tired. And so a lot of times I'll prompt it. It'll give me something that's truly not great, but my mental juices start flowing and creativity rolls. And I'm like, yes. And so if you use it for nothing but that, it's incredible. The next thing too, we wanted to kind of talk about just a food for thought. And if you have any thoughts on this, please DM us because we had a really good discussion about yeah. this is do we think chat GPT will replace Google? Right, because it's not just like, you. hey, write an essay for me. You can ask it questions. Ask them questions all the time. Yesterday, we asked it for someone's phone number. <laughs> and we wanted someone's, we, I'll just, I'm going to kind of say what we asked without saying directly what we asked. But we want to get in charge with like the head of a certain organization. And like we're just trying to skip all the the middlemen, I guess, and go straight to the top to get where we want. And we yeah, asked to get in contact with them. Yeah. So we asked it to find out the best way to contact these people. It gave us an answer, not the answer we're hoping for, but I hear on certain people can get it to give you a very specific phone number that right. is a direct line to certain people. So we say all that to tell you that will it replace Google? I don't think it will replace it because ChatGPT pulls its information from Google and Bing. Right. It just scans the internet. It scans Wikipedia, scans documents. So if that doesn't exist on Google, then where would ChatGPT get its information? Right. And I just feel like it, I feel like it'll probably affect the monopoly that Google has because right now Google is synonymous with looking something up. I'll say, oh, I'm going to Google that versus I'm going to look that up, you know, like and people, everyone knows what I mean. Right. I feel like there might just not be as much of a Google monopoly, but then maybe he'll see Google buy ChatGPT and then who It'll knows what I have just be a Well, I, I don't think it will because they just developed their own. I do oh, yeah. see them, though, because, okay, just like Google definitely moves you up in the rankings if you use YouTube because they own YouTube. So they're very friendly to people who use YouTube. That's why I'm always like, use it, use it, use it, especially if you have a website. I think that, they, that Google is going to still rank articles and blog posts that use their AI model, not ChatGPT. I think eventually they're going to penalize so ChatGPT. So they're going to use like AI nepotism, basically? I, 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 I mean, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer. That, caught, that question caught me off guard. Uh, and so they've come out with their own. I got on the wait list to be a trial user, but I haven't heard back. Google, if you're listening, you know, call your girl. I could try it out, let you know what I think. And so I don't think that I think we're going to come down to two groups of people. I think we're going to come down just like on Instagram. We're going to come out down to creators and consumers. And we're going to come down to creators who create information that goes on Google. And then there's going to be consumers who use ChatGPT to get that information. It's almost like an influencer. It's, it's exactly like an influencer model. Influencers are creators typically. And then there's the consumers who go in and buy their GWMs or GR, wait, GRMs, get ready with me, or GRWMs, get ready with me. Oh, okay. yeah, I didn't know where that acronym was going. Oh, I'm, I'm with you now. Get ready with me outfits. So there's the influencers yeah, I who feel create like it. I've seen that hashtag, and I'm, now I'm like, I it's know, everywhere. I know, and now I feel like I don't think I knew what that meant, and now oh. I do. Okay, so I, I think you're going to have creators, which we would love to be on that spectrum, but I think creators are going to eventually expect some type of compensation. Like, here I am creating right. this information, Chat GPT pulled it off the internet. And then gave it to Susie over here who searched for yeah. free. Like, where is my, I think there's going to come a level of monetization oh, for that, the creator. Oh, like intellectual property and stuff. Yeah, yeah. for that creator okay. level. Because that seems really unfair that you took time. Right. And I know life's not fair. Don't DM me that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had a rough morning. Don't DM me life's not fair. But if you put in this time to create these articles and then ChatGPT pulls it and then gives it to someone with no reference to where they got it from, Right. That seems insane to me and like copyright laws. I don't know. I think and I don't know enough about like NFTs and stuff, but like that just seems like, you know, digital, I guess, intellectual property or whatever, or creative right. property. I don't know what you'd call that. But like, I mean, if they're monetizing stuff like that on the internet, it would make sense that you'd be able to monetize your, you know, written word that you put. Right. If I put, because a blog post does take me a really long time. It's the longest thing I create every week is so long. And I would be so mad if someone just took it and didn't credit so, social Southern Creative and just gave it through ChatGPT and never even referenced us. And then someone took my information and repurposed right. it. 
And I know that happens at least with every... Google, you're sent to the website, but like with ChatGPT, it just gives it to you. Right. Like and no. I know people steal... I'm use ChatGPT to cite their sources, please. Yes, exactly. Can you please add that? <laughs> I know that people take stuff from Google all the time. I'm not saying, oh, Google's fair. It's not. But it does have a level of expectation of like, don't plagiarize, you know? Right, yeah. And well, that's a whole other to- to topic. So I know we're going right, off on a yeah. tangent, but we're really passionate about it. So just let you know, too, there's more than just ChatGPT out there that exists for AI. If you're like, no, I like to write my own blog posts, my own Instagram, my own emails. I like copywriting, basically. Mm -hmm. But you don't like videos. There are AI programs that will create full videos. I've played around with them. I played around with Predis.ai. It did generate videos for me, and I love them. This one, the next one we're going to tell you about, is really cool. Yeah, the try it on where you can get AI self portraits. So if you want like headshots for like your business for your business cards or whatever you want them for, um, for a, a bus bench that you're doing advertising for, you can submit just a couple like selfies, and they don't even have to be very good selfies. Like they could be they want them all different angles, right? Like they just have to be a variety, and then they will take your likeness and put you on like nice backgrounds and they can make your hair look nice and it there's some of them that are a little wonky and maybe don't look quite right yeah. but they send you a hundred for so, seventeen dollars for seventeen dollars you're not even really breaking the bank necessarily. yeah right that's two trips to starbucks you just don't do that make coffee what is your order not seventeen dollars no my, my dollar mine is um like four dollars and eighty cents or it's like five and change okay well and i get it used to be three i get oat milk and then i get the okay this is a We'll talk about Starbucks. Well, I just coffee. seen her facial expression when I said that, so I felt like I had to stop and ask her. <laughs> $17, you get 100 photos, and they give you all different backgrounds. So some of them look like you're at a dinner party. Some of them look like you're in a garden. Some look like right. you're on a- Some you're smiling, some you're not smiling. Right. Some your you hair's can use, up, hair's down, you know? Yeah, the hairstyles are crazy. It's called Try It On. Go look at their website. It's really incredible. So you get 100 photos. Honestly, I don't think that I really need headshots right now, but I'm tempted to spend the $18, $17 just because I'm curious. Like, I, like I just kind of want to see what they come up with. I'm in a mom group, and a bunch of the moms did it, and they were incredible. Every now and then, they'll get your teeth a little wrong. Uh, they say they'll look like vampire teeth, but out yeah. of 100 photos, they said 50 to 60 are usable, and really... 50 to 60 usable photos for $17. That's pretty That's good. That's insane. That's pretty good. And I've heard that some of the other ones, you might have like an arm sticking out of your leg or something. So even those unusable ones might be interesting <laughs> to look at. Might be fun. <laughs> might want to put those up. It'll get you some engagement. Well, that's our uh, that's our episode on chat GPT and AI. Like we said in the beginning, don't run from it. It needs to be a tool just like Canva, Asana, anything you're using now, your email uh platform that you use whether it be mailchimp or constant contact this is what chat gpt should be it's here it's gonna stay it's not going anywhere yeah so we're gonna try and lean into it we're i think we're working on like a webinar and stuff right now we are working on a webinar yes to try and train people how to use chat gpt so be on the lookout for that but i think that it's definitely something that we want to lean into without like relying on it. I don't think it's going to replace us. I don't think it would replace. And I wanted to speak about that too. Yeah. You're, you're going right into what I was going to say. Nothing will ever replace human connection video of you speaking, um, your voice and amazing customer service. So chat GBT will never do any of that for you. And, it is so important you have those things in your business. If you want to build trust, which when people trust you, they'll use you to buy a house. And, Therefore, like we're saying, use it as a tool. Yeah. We plan to lean into it. The first job that they said would be taken away by ChatGPT is marketing. And we have the opposite feelings. We are excited and ecstatic is here because we are a small agency and we need all the help we can get. So we look at ChatGPT, like Nina said, as right. an intern. It, I feel like it just allows us to be able to do even more now, you know? Like yeah, now like now the sky's like the I limit. Have, right, exactly. Yeah, so I'm excited to see what more we can accomplish now that we got ChatGPT 4 coming. Right. Yes. It came out and it's $20 a month. You can download it. I feel it is so worth the $20. I also have the pocket AI version on my phone, which is free, literally right on the go. I've had that thing make text messages for me if I'm really, really busy, but I know I need to respond and I don't have to worry about like my brand voice. Maybe it's just like something personal. I'll have it write one out for me. It's incredible. I'm excited about the future of AI. It doesn't really scare me too much right now. I'm in six months. We might come back and say something different. Yeah, we might come back and completely change our minds. But as of right now, 
This is our opinion. <laughs> yes. Use it. Let us know how you're using it. If you're using it in a different way than we suggested, please DM yeah, us. we're interested because we want to learn too. We're and a- we will share your DMs because we don't think we're the end all be all. We know that other people know just as much or more than us. So if you have an opinion about how you're using it, let us know. Yeah. All right, Nina, that's our episode. What are you doing this weekend? Um, Probably just some yard work and I'm hopefully going to spend some time outside in some beautiful weather, but we'll see. I want to hang out with Al, my boy, my sweet dog. Yes. Yeah, what are you doing this weekend? We are leaving today to go to St. Augustine. Uh, So we have two stepdaughters, and they go to a different school than my son. So their spring breaks were a month apart. And, yeah, so we're – I mean, so as a spring break now? yeah, as a mom, that's exciting. I got two spring breaks, you know, <laughs> but it it's good. And I'm going down in just a little bit to get groceries and all settled and kind of get everything ready. And then they will come this afternoon when they get out of school. Nice. And we're gonna spend the weekend. Gonna do my son's five and loves miniature golf. <gasps> oh, like he's at that age where it's like really fun. And we're gonna do that. Go to the beach. Go to Caps. Oh, okay. If you've never been to Caps in the nighttime. Go right when it gets dark and go down on their new dock. If you haven't been in a few years, they have a dock when it's covered now. And on the left side, there's like a green light in the water. Throw your extra bread or crackers from dinner in there or French fries and just hundreds and hundreds of fish will come up and eat them. It's, a, it's, a, it's its own attraction, honestly. They should charge for it. <laughs> so my son loves it. Anyway, that's my tidbit if you get to go to Caps. If you haven't been to Caps, definitely go. Hey, how exciting. Well, I hope you have a great weekend. Yes, you too. All right, Nina. See you next time. See ya.